Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Novika Putri. In this video, I will explain to you the structure and organ system of the amphibian. The amphibian that I have observed is Dutaprinus melanospictus. I hope this video will increase your knowledge. Happy watching! The first integument system is cutaneous membrane. The cutaneous membrane is the technical term for skin. The skin has essential function in a frog, among others, as mechanical barrier, as component of chemical defense mechanism, as sensory apparatus, as media for ion transport and water regulation, as respiratory organ, and as sodium reservoir. Gross anatomic observation reveal modified skin structure, such as tubercle and verruca, and on the frog skin, there is a pair of parotid gland was seen posterior to the eyes. Two types of glands were observed in the epidermal layer, the mucus and granular glands. In general, the granular glands produces white smell like secretion which is more poisonous than that of the mucus gland. The secretion is released under stimulation of sympathetic nerve or hormone, which prevents frog from predation and is effective against bacteria and fungi. The mucus gland secreted continuously to maintain skin moisture. In general, the mucus glands are occurring over the entire body. These glands are especially denser dorsally. Such a distribution pattern of the glands might be considered vital in coping with much more intense exposure of dorsal skin to extreme environment such as high temperature and high intensity light. The top rhinus melanostictus have the short webbing. The webbing increases the surface area, increasing the ability to swim efficiently. This is blood vessel in the subcutaneous layer. The frog's eye is covered by a membrane. This is a nictitating membrane. The nictitating membrane is the flap of skin that acts like goggles, covering up the eyes while the frog swimming. The other membrane is tympanic membrane or tympanum. Tympanum is the circular parts of skin directly behind its egg. The tympanum transmits sound wave to the middle and inner air, along a frog to her bath in the air and below water. On the anterior side, there are A, nostril, and nose. The top of the head has several bony ridges. Along the edge of the snout is cantor ridge. In front of the A is preorbital, above the A is supraorbital, behind the A is posterorbital, and a short one between the A and R is orbital tympanic. The frog has four limbs and hind limbs. On four limbs, there are four toes, and on hind limbs, there are five toes. These are toes. Toes are black tip and hook. No addition pads are present. No webbing on front toes, and only very small webbing on hind toes. The last organ is cloaca. The cloaca, also known as the vein, serves as the executivity for the excretory, urinary, and reproductive system. Male and female frog both have cloacas, which the respective reproductive tract use as the vehicle for the passage of sperm and egg. The muscular system in frogs is divided into four parts, namely the muscular system in the head, the muscular system of the chest area, the muscular system of the abdominal or ventral region, and the muscular system of the posterior extremities. The musculus of the chest area consists of the musculus deltoid and musculus pectoralis. The musculus of the abdominal consists of the rectus abdominis, the obliquus externus, and the obliquus internus. The musculus rectus abdominis is found in the ventral media of the body, in the middle of which there is a white tendon called the linea alba. The muscular system in the posterior extremities consists of two parts, the femur and the crust. In the femur, the muscle from the lateral to medial direction can be identified including the tricep femoris, adductor magnus, gracilis major, and gracilis minor muscle. Meanwhile, the muscle that build part of the crust include the gastronomous muscle. The respiratory surface on each body that it uses to exchange gas with surrounding the skin, in the lungs, and on the lining of the mouth. While completely submerged, all of the frog's respiration takes place through the skin. The skin is composed of thin membranous tissue that is quite permeable to water and contains a large network of blood vessel. The thin membranous skin is allows the respiratory gases to rapidly diffuse directly down their gradients between the blood vessel and the surrounding. When the frog is out of the water, mucus gland in the skin keep the frog moist, which help absorb dissolved oxygen from the air. A frog may also breathe much like a human by taking air in through their nostril and down into their lungs. 
The mechanism of taking air into the lungs is however slightly different than in humans. Frogs don't have ribs nor a diaphragm. In order to draw air into its mouth, the floor lowers the floor of its mouth, which causes the throat to expand. Then the nostril open, allowing air to enter the enlarged mouth. The nostril then close, and the air in the mouth is forced into the lungs by contraction of the floor of the mouth. I limit the carbon dioxide in the lungs. The floor of the mud moved down, drawing the air out of the lungs and into the mud. Finally, the nostrils are open and the floor of the mud moved up pushing the air out of the nostril. Frogs also have a respiratory surface on the lining of their mud on which gas exchange takes place rapidly. While at rest, this process is their predominant form of breathing. It only fills the lungs occasionally. This is because the lungs, which only adults have, are probably the food. The digestive system in frogs start from the oral cavity. The mouth of the frogs is supported by the upper and lower jaws. The frogs also has a very long and sticky tongue. The tip of the frog's tongue can roll up with itself to catch its prey. Frogs have an esophagus. There is a sharp tube. The esophagus produces alkaline secretion and have food passed into the stomach. These mini movements are called peristalsis. The stomach is in the form of a sac. They widen when filled with food. The stomach wall in the frog squeezes the food until it is destroyed with the help of enzyme produced by the stomach. The digestive gland consists of the liver and pancreas. The liver is bony that consists of the right loop which is further divided into two lobules. The function of the liver is to remove bile which is stored in the gallbladder which is greenish in color. Yellowish pancreas attach between the stomach and duodenum. The pancreas function to produce enzyme and hormone which lead to the duodenum. Continue to the intestine. The intestine is divided into two, namely the first is the small intestine. The small intestine in frog is divided into three types, namely the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. There is a process of absorption of food juice with the help of enzyme produced by the pancreas. The second is the large intestine. There is absorption of water from food and food spoilage. The large intestine ends at the rectum and continues into the cloaca where is it the mode of the digestive tract, the productive tract, and urine. There are kidneys near the digestive organ. Kidneys are opistonephron, the main excretory tool in frogs. The remaining substances taken up by the kidneys are channeled through the ureter to the bladder from the protozoan of the cloacal wall. Its function is to store urine temporarily. <laughs> Frogs have a closed circulatory system and a double circulation. Double blood curling system is to pass through the heart twice in one circulation. First, the blood that comes from the heart goes to the lungs and then return to the heart. Second, blood that comes from all over the body will go to the heart and will circulate back to the rest of the body. Frogs have a heart that consists of three chambers, namely two atria, right atrium and left atrium, and one ventricle. Between the atria and ventricle, there are valves that function to prevent blood in the ventricle from flowing back into the atria. Blood with less oxygen from various tissue and organs of the body will flow into the sinus venous to the right atrium. Furthermore, blood from the right atrium will flow to the ventricle, then will go to the pulmonary artery and enter the lungs. In the lungs, carbon dioxide will be released and oxygen will be bound. From the lungs, blood flows into the pulmonary vein and then into the left atrium. The circulatory process that occurs is called small blood circulation. The next stage is blood flow from the left atrium, then the blood will flow to the ventricle. Is it in this ventricular chamber that blood containing oxygen is mixed with blood containing small amount of carbon dioxide? Blood flow from the ventricle will go out through the tractus arteriosus to the aorta that branches to the left and to the right. Each of these aorta branches to form three main arteries, namely one, the anterior artery which function to supply blood to the head and to the brain. Two, the aortic arch which supplies blood to all internal tissue and organ in the body. And three, the posterior artery which function to supply blood to the skin and lungs. Frog's blood consists of blood plasma and blood cells. The content of blood plasma, namely water, blood protein, and mineral salt. Frog's blood cell consists of erythrocyte and leukocyte. 
erythrocyte in frog have a core and contain hemoglobin which function to bind oxygen. The nervous system of frog is composed of the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. This animal have a forebrain, main brain, hind brain, and advanced marrow that form a central nervous system. When nerve fibers originating from and between the vertebra form a peripheral nervous system. The cerebrum is elongated, so that is it oval in shape. The end of the cerebrum is connected to the sense of smell. The midbrain is quite well developed and is associated with the sense of sight optic loop. The cerebellum is curved horizontally toward the advanced marrow and the relationship develops well. It is supported and protected by a bony framework called the skeleton. Skull is flat except for an expanded area that encloses the small brain. Only 9 vertebrae make up the frog's backbone or vertebral column. The frog doesn't have a tail, only a spike-like bone, the urostyle. Remains as evident that primitive frogs probably had tails. Urostyle or tail pillar is a downward extension of the vertebra column. The frog has one forearm bone, the radio ulna, and one upper arm bone, the humerus. The hind legs of the frog are highly specialized for leaping. The single shin bone is tibiofibula. The femur is the single upper leg bone. A third division of the frog's leg consists of two elongated ankle bones or tarsa. These are the astragalus and calcaneus. That's all the structure and organ system of the amphibian. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like my video. Thank you.